yourself is broken glass we'll head upstairs uh, I have a for question. the first section of it is the door is broken can I get a discount uh, <laughs> I'll try I'll get you a discount what do you think you want like a couple hundred off is that All what right, you're asking for <laughs> so it's um, it was used as a medical building in the past the pharmacy below solid block building um, we can have a walk through here now the great thing is it's zone Z C5 um, and the area especially the area it's five minutes to the general hospital so in relation to the hospital you will definitely if you get this as a conversion project this would be great for a rental opportunity there's a ton of space in this building yeah. what's, what's the square footage 15,200 uh, the zoning allows for uh, residential or I should say mix but it's been moved over um, and uh, quite a few other options but I think for what you guys are looking for is mostly residential what's uh, uh, what was the zone c5 c5 yeah what's yeah. c5 and let me Does it come it with the renovation tools? <laughs> if you want, I'll probably throw that in as part <laughs> of the Get it thrown into the... <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what's the asking price? $1,999. Um, now, this is fairly well priced. Um, it's been on the market for around 40 days, 48 days. Um, the seller is ready to do a deal because of the way the market is right now. I think we can get it to 97, 98% of asking. I don't think so we can get a major, major discount because they've already gone through the phase one and phase two assessment and it's clean, which is very rare for So they've commercial. done the phase one, phase two already? Yes, they have. Okay, perfect, yeah. perfect. Yeah. perfect. And okay. they've done a record of site condition where they've moved it where you're permitted from commercial to residential. Oh, nice. So for up to 20 units, you can already do that in this building. So the opportunity, it's kind of been teed up for you guys. So you. phase one, probably led to a phase two because this was a medical facility, so right. there could be contaminants. Yeah. And there was no mention of a phase three needed for any remediation Correct. of soil. Correct. Okay, perfect. And I think you have drawings too with, with yes, uh, and the what supplements. they wanted to do, yeah. right? Yeah, so, so the seller's providing that to us. So if you know we want to pursue this, we can pursue it aggressively and, and we can use that as a tactic to say, well, nice. the phase two, when it ends in, in relation to when you wanted the renovations, we can use that as a, as a negotiation. So, so I'm reading here, yeah, it says multiple dwelling. So that means you can do 100% residential. Yeah. What are you thinking unit-wise? What do you think we can get in here? Uh, uh, let's, take a, let's count it out. Let's see, let's see. So obviously we only have windows at the front and back. So we got to kind of, and we have, looks can like we, we already have a corridor set up. Yeah. Can we do something with these windows? They're really ugly. Yeah, I like think we can. Like I, think, I think we can cut them all out and kind of double them up. Um, Depends on what uh, what Ken and his guys. Yeah, we'll have to see how the design. unit yeah. lays out. But like right now, just kind of looking, um, looks like that could be. Oh, this is also you, another you got exit. another entry so another exit from here on the other side. Okay. So we could technically rail this off. This would be a, a complete separate entrance into this unit. So this would be like kind of a private unit. So how this how is all the. How much do you think we're saving not having to do a big demo? Oh, in here. Yeah. Well. Off the top of my head, simple math. You said 15,000 square feet? Yeah, 15,2. So I wanna say you would be at about five bucks a square foot. You're saving about 70 grand. This is the mirrored okay. side on the other side. So is the basement like this as well? Is it mirror and mirror? Uh, essentially, there's a bit of a difference in the basement, but essentially, yeah. So I'm, like I'm seeing like here. one and like four or five along that side. Okay. Um, same thing on this side. So like we're sitting around like 10, 11, mm -hmm. 11 units maybe per floor. Yeah. And, and I it, think rent wise, like one bedrooms ish, give or take in this area, we'd probably get it to 17, 1800 bucks each. Oh, easily. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, <laughs> Your face already, right? <laughs> uh, so it's well, vacant, I've warned, you, we've, you've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, let's start with upstairs. Okay. All right. Go for it. Wow, the smell, guys. 
Smells you know what that like smell money. is? You know what that smell is? <laughs> money, money. <laughs> wow, okay. I love it. It's empty. This is, this is ugly. It's the right amount of ugly, that's for sure. You want to yeah. buy something that's the right amount of ugly. If you buy something that's too nice, you're probably leaving a ton of money in the deal. Uh, definitely, uh, the potential is huge here. What's your plan? 22 units, converting it from commercial to residential and uh, exiting with CBHC. Okay, and um, do you guys have partners in the deal? We have uh, one investor. Uh, he's going to bring 800 uh, to, to the 800, table. Yeah. Up, up to 800, yeah. Up to 800. Okay. Uh, the rest, um, you know, we're bringing you to the table, see what uh, type of loan we can get, exit strategy based upon uh, our construction and investor numbers. I think for construction, we we're thinking 1.5 to 1.7 when we were looking at all the numbers. The construction numbers. budget is 1.7, yeah, okay. 1.7 1. at the at the high end. Yeah. I believe like, I'd rather be conservative and, and come in high, uh, ask for more money up front than kind of fall short and have to you know beg for money on the back end and give it more yeah. equity potentially. Okay. I was, I was looking at the rents. I think we're getting you know on the low end conservatively. I think 1,800 a unit, give or take. So 22 units, 1,800 a unit. Construction is 1.7. What about the purchase price? What uh, what did your firm? Two million. Up? Two million. Yeah. yeah, just under. We have it under contract, and so we've got to just figure out the whole financing stuff now. And how much time do we have for the financing condition on this one? Oh, uh, 60 days. Okay. We were trying for 90, but okay. they, we had to go back and forth a few times. And... Okay, so 60 days. Okay, so here is here is what we're going to do for this one. We have a clean phase one, by the way, a clean phase yes. two. We have an RSC. Excellent. So uh, they we That's have the helpful. zoning. So they we can't extend past really the 60s because they have everything for us ready ready to go. Okay. Okay. So here are here are what we're gonna here's what we're gonna do. Um, basically, we gotta order an as is and an as complete appraisal because we have to see what the future value looks like, and uh, we gotta take a look at the future net operating income. Okay. So uh, let's. Would you guys be okay if we go ahead and, sure. and order yeah, that? Absolutely. Okay. How long does that take usually? I know like the commercial stuff is a little bit longer than. Yeah, we can rush it, but we're probably looking at three weeks. Okay. Um, on something like this. Mm -hmm. But that's really the key first step before doing anything else. So I want to see that. And in the meantime, I can run some numbers for you guys. We can basically uh, look at what our exit is going to look like. So this is definitely uh, private money. This is not a traditional loan. Yeah, uh, we, fig we figured that. Fr from yeah, how it good. smells and looks. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to look for private money. And um, there would be an option to fund some or all of the construction. Perfect. Um, Beautiful. But in order to determine how much money we take, um, we want to know how much money we're going to get when we exit the deal. So I'm going to run some numbers for you based on what you told me. 22 units, 11, mm -hmm. 1,800 in, in rents, mm -hmm. uh, based on the value that the appraiser is going to come with. And we're going to see how much money we can get with CMHC uh, down the road. And then based on that, we'll decide how much money we take on construction and from the private lender. Now, yeah. when you run your analysis, basically, um, you allocate roughly about 30% for expenses. So yes, because that's- Because this is gonna be new construction, just uh, maybe uh, uh, remember that all the utilities are gonna be passed on to the tenant. So they're gonna be on their own hydro, I'm gonna put the water on them, and the heating system most likely will be uh, heat pumps. So we're going to take the gas right off of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the heat pumps run off electric. So that'll be put right on the tenants. We'll probably have 10% for, for common area stuff. Okay. And I think too, like we were talking a little bit about the MLI and how to, you know, make it so that we have some points. So I, I, I don't think it's so bad an idea to look an at energy some of that program, as well. So we do an energy audit yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It, it's, it will determine if we want to take the entire private loan or, you know, if you have a cheaper source of money using the grants, uh, we cut down a little bit on the private. So how much do you think you would be getting in the grant? We're still looking into it. We're still exploring it. Okay. Um, yeah, we're still new to looking at the grants. So let's pretend there's no grants and the grants will be at. That's what bonus. I'm going to say. Yeah. Yes, let's, okay. let's do that. Let See me... if we can borrow as much as possible, 100% of the as construction. As long as it makes sense, right? And we can exit and uh, we're still cash flowing. Yep. Right? Yeah, let me go to the drawing board, guys. Okay. Crunch some numbers for you and I'll come back with uh, some ideas. Awesome. Very Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Nelly. Okay. Yeah. From a financing point of view, we're looking at the current market. It's June 2022. Uh, what are you foreseeing how things are going for your investors? 
Well, there are several things that are ahead of us that investors have to keep in mind and pay attention to, starting with rates, which are not a surprise. Rates are going to be rising across the board, uh, both on the residential side and the multifamily side. And uh, there will be impacts on cash flow in some cases, mortgage payments in other cases, and investors have tools at hand actually to deal with these rising rates aside from locking into fixed rates. And we're happy to um, share insights about these tools. The rates is one. The second one is there is expectation that values may soften in certain markets because we're no longer seeing these crazy offers, competitive offers, above asking prices. Uh, so the sold data is coming in a little bit lower than where it was six months ago or a few months ago. So there will be some softening in values and therefore from an investor standpoint, it is important to um, incorporate the appraisal condition in your offers and make sure that the values are there for the prices you're paying. Qualification is gonna get tougher as rates rise on the residential side. As we all know in 2018, the stress test uh, kicked in and the way qualification works is by lenders looking at the Bank of Canada rate of 525 versus the, the mortgage rate you're getting approved for at 2%. And now we're at a point where the mortgage rates are rising. So very, very soon they're gonna use this qualification bar to approve applications, which, which mean that uh, clients, if they don't plan, will qualify for less on a refinance and can qualify for less on a purchase. Because qualification is going to get tighter, there is also going to be higher demand for private money and B lender money. So again, the best thing to do in the environment we're heading into is to plan, to sit down and talk about your goals, talk about uh, your portfolio and look at the implications of interest rates rising and be proactive about tackling, you know, the changing environment that's coming our way. Uh, how do we go about planning with you? What would what would you uh, suggest the next steps would be? So in terms of hedging against the rise in interest rates, uh, we did develop a calculator called the Rate Scenarios Calculator, which is a complementary calculator investors can take to stress test their portfolio and see the impact of rising rates on payments. And it will guide their decision as to where to lock or if they should stay put or if they should talk to an advisor about other strategies to help their cash flow. Um, they can book a complimentary planning session by emailing us at info at streetwisemortgages.com and um, we're here to hold hands and help you manage effectively going forward. There is no reason to panic, there is no reason to stress and by planning you can also sleep at night. Amazing and uh, can you just suggest a few more times where as a seasoned investor where I'm uh, growing my portfolio when a good time is to stop check in with you and reevaluate my portfolio. You've talked about rising interest rates, we know that. You've talked about how the banks are reassessing, uh, maybe even the stress test, we know that. So what are other times where you're like, okay, if we see this happening, please come to us, let's reassess and let's reevaluate. So planning uh, is good when one of two things happen. If your personal situation changes as an investor, uh, if your goals are changing or your personal situation is changing or the environment around you is changing. So right now, the environment is changing and this is why it's a good time to revisit everyone's plans. All right, so I'm excited to figure out what we can qualify for, what the financing looks like for our wonderful 22 unit conversion. What, uh, what are we looking at? Okay, so we know this is going to be a private deal yeah. and we want to make sure that once you guys renovate, we're going to be able to pay off the private loan. That's really key. Mm -hmm. So here is what I did. I basically looked at the uh, ask complete appraisal that you gave me. We know the value is going to be close to six million. Yeah. We know that the gross rental income is going to be at uh, 400,000 roughly. So I basically uh, ran the scenarios from a CMHC standpoint. Uh, 18 months out. So I took that gross rental income, factor in, factored in a vacancy allowance of 5%, accounted for the property taxes, for the insurance premium you guys will pay, the repairs and maintenance that CMHC would consider. Although uh, your number may be different, we have to take into consideration how they think. Right. And uh, any utilities that you will be paying, 
and then some other expenses that CMHC will take into consideration like um, uh, general and admin, uh, property management. So overall, the expense ratio is around 30% and your net operating income is 278. And one of the things um, we um, wanted to make sure of is that we are factoring in the higher interest rate. So by the mm -hmm. time you finish your renovation, the interest rate is, is not going to be yeah. where it is today. So I took five to five and a half percent. Where is it today, just as an average? So right now with um, CMHC deals, we're at four and a half roughly. Okay. So I added in half a point and I added in one percent and the number still work beautifully work? yeah awesome. and also on a fully renovated building mm -hmm. like this one where you're gutting it and finishing it up completely it's likely you guys will get 40 year am uh, but i did run the numbers conservatively on 35 years okay we'll look at it as conservative right and then the upside is going to be the 40 years aka more cash flow. Ex exactly okay. exactly so factoring in an interest of five percent 35 year am yeah we're looking at a loan with cmhc eventually of uh, 3.6 roughly got it so now we got to basically make sure that whatever private money we take up front is equal or less to that amount. Okay. Um, so I'll show you what that would look like. So on this deal, uh, we have a lender lined up, a private lender li lined up, and they can also fund the construction. What they're willing to do in this location is give you 85% of the appraised value. So we have to come up with only 15% down? Yes, 15% okay. down, and they will fund 100% of the construction. Amazing. Um, I mean, the, you can't get that with small deals. Like this, is more, like, this is where you play to get this kind of financing. Yes, 100%. And the interest rate is 7.5%, and okay. interest-only payment. And it's an 18 month term, uh, but you do have the option to break this mortgage after 12 months if you want. Got it. So if Lee finishes earlier, <laughs> yes, <laughs> then, then we can exit early. Yes, then it's fully open. Okay. Uh, here is what your loan breakdown is going to look like. Uh, you're getting the 85% of the appraised value, 100% um, construction. Uh, the lender is going to charge a 2% lender fee. Um, as brokers, we're going to charge a 1%. And we're going, we, there is an option here to roll all of your costs into the loan if you want. So would you like to do that or? Yeah, if you, you think the numbers make sense, then you it, know, it's the, better than paying monthly payments if it can work. Yeah, they do. So we can okay. roll in the interest reserve on the loan okay, and the lender fee and the broker fee. So your total loan from total approved loan would be 3.4 million roughly, mm -hmm. which is uh, about 60% of your ask complete value. Now, here's something I want to make you aware of. On the day of closing, Sarah, yeah. what's going to happen is that from this 3.4 million, the lender is going to take away their lender fee. Okay. Uh, we're going to get paid as brokers. The interest reserve is also going to get parked and they're going to park the construction loan of 1.6 that you guys told us about. Uh, they're going to give it to you in draws, in $300,000 draws, once you show that you've invested money in the project. So on the day of closing, you're going to get net cash at hand from the lawyer of $1.3 million, okay. which means that you need to raise um, $700,000 with your investor mm -hmm. and also have uh, them contribute some funds to kickstart the project. And I know you told me upfront that you do have someone lined up. Yeah. Or about eight hundred thousand, which which is great. Yeah, they're committing up to eight hundred. So if it's a little bit less, it's a little bit less. If it's eight hundred, then that's great. Otherwise, uh, we're all kicking in some money. Yeah, one thing that I want to make sure that we uh, structure right from the get go, so there are no surprises mm -hmm. when the time comes with CMHC, mm -hmm. is when you set up your corporation that owns the building. You, Lee, and Ken um, are the directors of the business. You own. 50% uh, or more and your shareholder comes in with money ideally they have not ideally they have non-voting shares okay. if possible yep. and they own um, a, a smaller share in the business why because mm -hmm. that reduces the chances that the lender is going to ask for their personal guarantees but if they're okay. open for personal yep. guarantees then you can you so know we can give them both yes options. exactly okay. exactly but, and, but less than 50% yes okay yeah but uh, that's pretty much it. Great deal. Um, yeah, I'm on, on, about it. on your exit, you're going to pay off all of the money we're taking up front and you're going to walk away with additional cash. So without putting any of our own money into the deal, without putting any of your own that's money. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks you, for all your help. You're welcome. All the best. Thanks. Let's do this. And, and bring that up and over or something. Yeah, I like it like that, actually. That looks good.
Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That works. Were you doing anything above that door? Like, are you, were you no. going to do glass? Are you we're going to we're gonna cut it out, but I think it's better if it stays there. We're going we're gonna to raise up the brick because there's a brick that's been framed down okay. lower. So this is the front. Can you zoom out a little bit so we can see? Okay. So we've had all those skinny windows, but um, so what we're going to do is these all have to be 45 minute, 45 minute rated, right? All have to be 45 minute rated. Uh, not tempered. Wind. Well, so these ones here at the bottom, because we're we're at floor level, these bottom panes will have to be tempered. So what we're gonna do is, because this is double, this is a pretty big pane, so I think we should split that. Right, Anthony, we're gonna have that. Oh no, we said one. Mm -hmm. And then double for the triple. Okay, so those would be basically fixed pane glass. Yep. Okay, this is just one big fixed pane. So the bottom, do we have to do tempered as well? Yeah, we're gonna have to actually. Yeah, because it's at street level yeah. in case it gets kicked in. Okay. Now we said some are gonna have their in-house or in. Yeah, so all of the one beds, the one beds and the one plus dens all have in laundry, okay. and then all the bachelors will be sharing the uh, common laundry. Okay. All right. So, so kind of for those. Yeah, providing different amenities, um, you know, different price points of units. And we're gonna furnish a couple bachelors as well. Furnish, run them out, increase their cash flow. Yeah, some of these little tiny ones could be yeah. good little Airbnb ones. Yeah. And up to the underside of the um, the steel trusses. Yeah. Right? So we still have to fire rate that because... It'll be drywalled, obviously, but it's yeah. slab on grade, so it's concrete. Which yeah, but there's that cavity, though, because you, you, you're going to be drywalling up to the truss. Up to the cavity that's coming across before the they're, they're roof deck steel. So find out, we think we only need one layer of 5.8. It has to be a one-hour rating. So what's the, what's the current rating on it right now? Well, the current there is no rating on it right now there's no rating on the steel the steel is just a framing member you're talking about from the ground from the basement from the lower level because you have you have this pull up the uh elevation yeah, this, um, this is <laughs> on, on here pull up the elevation on here we're not separating here no um, we don't have to do separation here but we have to do that's what i'm talking this about. has to be fire rated drywall yes under yes 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 so i'm right talking about no, Separating this is fine. The concrete above, we don't have to do. No, the concrete deck is it's fine. just from the TGI and the concrete over. Fire separation is always the most like difficult, challenging. Yeah, no, sure. Things. This is this is the real life. This is like what actually happens, not stuff that we see on TV where everything is dramatic. This is <laughs> small drama, but you know, it's all, it's all fun. It's just taking the building code, the fire code, seeing what the the, the the allowable products are um, to achieve what we need to achieve uh, in a timely sort of budget friendly manner um, you know and sometimes having these things pre-planned and you know even though we'll have like i don't it's, this isn't even a disagreement but we'll we want to know uh, the best path to go forward and uh, there's probably about a dozen products out there that we can use that uh, may be less expensive and may be faster which time is money in the construction industry yeah really that's a that's the latest updates on this on this project i keep hitting my light on this it's all good I I'm, I'm excited about this one is it fire separated this <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we got all these little up down lights just for a cool dramatic uh, lighting effect at nighttime we're gonna do on the front and the back yeah. Um, What's the material that you guys are doing? Other than the brick that's going to be there? Yeah, it's called cedar renditions. It's just basically it's an aluminum siding that's made to look like uh, it's made to look like cedar. Okay, so yeah, basically next step is we're getting this off to the mechanical designer. Okay. Um, to start working on HVAC, plumbing, and electrical designs. Okay. Um, our guys here, Anthony's going to be doing the uh, the fire alarm design. Um, yeah, and then okay. we'll awesome. We can Good get job. going to the city. I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Okay, perfect. Okay, lots of ups and downs, but it'll be a good one. Perfect. Some practical tips that I can share with the, that can help with the change in the market from being a very competitive uh, seller market uh, with many, many deals, obviously being in bidding wars and going, you know, over ask uh, some quite substantially to now being more balanced, maybe even a buyer's market for the first time in several years. Um, number one would obviously be, you know, you, you don't want to go into any deals firm without condition. 
Uh, you'd want to make sure you've got conditions for property inspections, uh, financial approval, mortgage approval, potentially even like a home insurance approval. Um, you know, inserting these conditions back into um, the offer to purchase and accepting them on the sales side too. Like if you're a real estate investor and you're selling, we're going to all have to accept that the market has shifted. Um, you're not going to see bidding wars and stuff like that anymore. And even maybe firm offers, right? Um, better to make sure you know your buyer's done all their due diligence and got everything properly approved at the outset, as opposed to finding it out the week of closing or day up. Uh, because what we're seeing as lawyers on, on these uh, changing times is essentially we get to the week of closing or even uh, potentially the day of closing and people's financing is, is not coming in as high as it needs to um, or there's significant delays in the, the mortgage being processed and approved. Um, so extensions need to be requested um, or people are not able to uh, potentially sell their house, which was a significant part of their plan of financing, you know, the, the acquisition of the property. So I think, you know, some practical tips would be include the conditions, allow for a potentially longer closing period. Don't do 30 or, or fewer days, do, you know, maybe 45, 60 plus days, maybe even longer, build in like a conditional period of like 15 to 30 days. And then specifically with the financing, if it's possible, work with a mortgage broker or a bank representative who's handling your, your financing of the deal um, and, and make certain that um, it's not just a pre-approval letter. See if they can actually actively order the appraisal, pay the money, pay the 500 bucks or whatever it is to, to get that appraisal done ahead of time because the banks are not going to finance your acquisitions based off of purchase price in an agreement they're doing it based off appraised value always have always will we just never had to worry about it because everybody knew these appraisals in the hot market were always going to be the purchase price or better well i mean i think it's always beneficial and especially with kind of the shift in the market now that it's a bit more of a um, you know buyer's market or a bit, bit more of a balanced market um, you know, having conditions that allow you the due diligence to, um, you know, check into things like your finance, um, your mortgage approval, uh, insurance approval, um, due diligence of like property search and inspection. Um, if you're, if you are, you know, we're talking about an investor specifically, they might have other partners involved. So they want to have it be conditional upon review and due diligence of their investors as well. Um, depending on the scope and size of a project or the type of property, if it was commercial or potentially was commercial before, you know, there might need to be environmental searches done. Um, another thing that commonly is overlooked, but having the deal conditional and or uh, terms related to uh, permits, work orders, zoning, uh, those are really important. Um, easy example, let's say a client's buying a property, um, but there's no conditions, or at least there's no condition about permits, use, and, and zoning. Um, if it turns out, in fact, the, the property is being bought to be used as a duplex, because that's how the seller uses it, but then it turns out, um, that there's a notice from the city at when the when the buyer closes on the deal that it's actually not legally zoned to be used as the duplex. Now they've got a problem in fees and costs converting it to a duplex, which they didn't anticipate, which could can considerably impact whether or not they would have done the deal in the first place. So that's an easy example of how um, adding that type of clause can be very important to um, somebody buying. Uh, specifically the investors. All right, so I'm gonna put everybody in the hot seat, including myself. We're gonna get to know each other.
and uh, we're gonna have the audience get to know a little bit about us. So uh, I will start, we're gonna go quick intros. I'm Sarah Larby, I'm a real estate investor. I left my nine to five job October 1st, 2020 and uh, using the Burr strategy, buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. I uh, love the Airbnb strategy, love the midterm strategy. Uh, recently started doing some development, building a resort and working with these crazy guys over here, doing some larger conversions as well. So that is about me, Aisha. What is the 30,000 foot view of what you're doing from a real estate standpoint? So um, I'm a real estate investor as well. I work very closely with Sarah Larby and her coaching. And now I work with these guys and we're working on a lot of cool stuff together. We're into long-term holds and student rentals, but my new passion is short-term and midterm because Sarah knows best and she's taught me well and hopefully getting into the cottage country and enjoying that very, very soon. Amazing, awesome, Ken. Uh, my name's Ken Beekendam and I uh, started up LegalSuckingSweets.com. This is back in 2018. And uh, yeah, we just started out doing a couple of designs. I was, I'm a full-time investor. So I went full-time in 2018 as well. That's when I quit my other job. And I uh, haven't looked back since. And we've just been scaling up and growing and doing more and more projects every every year and helping a ton, a ton of investors doing all sorts of stuff from a little bungalow to even larger stuff like 20, 30 unit uh, conversions. And yeah, and I partnered up with Lee here back in the fall and we joined our construction companies together uh, and um, formed Wise Construction Group and we're knocking out a lot of work. Amazing, awesome, Lee. Uh, so my name is Lee Pollock. I've been an investor for about 10 years. Um, started a construction company, uh, merged over to uh, Wise Construction with, with Ken. Um, also started a property management company called Black Box. Uh, and yeah, so working on lots of projects and left my job, my full-time job in uh, CapEx construction work, uh, probably uh, July, sorry, August of 2020. Uh, that I was at for uh, for quite some time and been doing this full time. Amazing. Alex. My name is Alexandra Sodoro and I have my own uh, social media management company called uh, Made Out of Media, but I don't also do, I don't only do social media, I also do a lot of business consulting. Um, so I also am a real estate investor, mostly um, in the single family home space and then basically taking those single family homes and converting them to duplexes, but now trying to get in the multifamily uh, space. We try to find a, actively looking to find a, a building I can invest in. It's not spreading through the webs one unit into the other. But it's, it's, above, it's above the webs. Yeah, it's, it's above the web. It's on the channel. On yeah, the but that's this concrete slab up, up above. But it that. goes through from the units. Talk to Jay. So let's talk to Jay and see. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a friendly little bet here. We're going to do a walkthrough eventually with the inspector, and we're going to do this on camera, and we're going to make a gentleman's bet. Of who's right and who's of wrong. A dollar. <laughs> but this is common. This is what we usually do. But either way, the job gets done. I'll get done. I'll get done. I'm confident that I'm right. Let's you owe me see. a dollar. You will owe me a dollar. <laughs> oh, I've been running from the law. Hope they won't shoot me down soon.